Welcome to Backroom Breakdown with Lauren, your analysis of local, state, and federal politics. This is DITV's weekly politics segment where I'll discuss important political events impacting Iowa City. I'm your host, Lauren Johnson. The Iowa Legislature has continued its focus on education in recent weeks. In her condition of the state address, Governor Kim Reynolds outlined a few priorities in education that boiled down to more transparency from schools about what is being taught. In her speech, she said, Parents should know what their kids have access to, and they should have a timely process to address their concerns. Because when our parents are fully informed, they can make informed choices, end quote. The bill, Senate Study Bill, or SSB 3080, would require high school seniors to pass a civics test before receiving their diplomas. Additionally, it would allow some Iowa families to apply for scholarships to help pay for private schooling. These would equate to around $5,300 per year and would be available to a family of four earning up to 400% of the federal poverty level, or around $111,000 yearly. These vouchers would also be available to children with individual education plans. This part of the bill is similar to a proposal that passed the Senate in 2021, but failed to pass the House. Additionally, this bill would require public schools to provide information about the classes taught. Schools would have to provide a summary of the classes as well as a list of any materials used in them, such as books, videos, and other items. Additionally, schools would be required to provide a list of all books available in libraries, along with a way to request the removal of books. Additionally, if a school refuses to remove a book, parents would be able to appeal to the State Board of Education to have it removed under the new bill. While this bill would use public money to fund private school educations through state scholarships, the class materials and library requirements would only apply to public schools. This matters because if public funds are being used in private schools, why should they be exempt from the standards public schools are being held to? After a long month of debates around how much funding the legislature would approve, the Iowa Senate approved a bill to give approximately $159 million, or a 2.5% increase in funding, to schools this year. The House passed the 2.5% increase last week, which means it is now going to Governor Reynolds' desk to be signed into law. Reynolds proposed the increase in her condition of the state speech earlier this year, so she's expected to sign it. While the legislature is required to pass school funding bills in the first 30 days of the legislative session, that was waived this year due to a disagreement between the House and Senate. Originally, the Senate only wanted to give an increase of 2.25 percent. Another bill, SF-2198, would allow parents to sue school districts over obscene materials in libraries. This proposal moved forward in the legislature last week with some Republican lawmakers referring to these obscene materials as, quote, grooming materials, end quote. It was proposed by Senate President Jake Chapman, who made headlines in January for accusing teachers of promoting a, quote, sinister agenda, end quote. Though schools have had to review certain books in libraries in recent months, most schools have decided to retain controversial books. This happens for multiple reasons, including trusting children to handle explicit content and recognizing the important role some of these stories play in a child's understanding of themselves. Also, it is important to note that by law, Iowa schools follow the same ruling as the United States Supreme Court when deciding what counts as obscene material. It is only considered obscene if it lacks literary, scientific, political, or artistic value. As long as the argument can be made for any of those, by law, these books are allowed to stay. Thanks for tuning in to Backroom Breakdown. I'll be back next week with more of the latest political news affecting Iowa City, Iowa, and the USA. I'm Lauren Johnson. Have a great day.